Welcome back to my Sardinian adventure. In this episode, I'm taking you on an unforgettable sailing trip through the stunning Maddalena archipelago, home to some of the clearest waters and the famous pink beach. Is it really pink? But that's not all. I'll be exploring some of my favorite underrated towns in northeastern Sardinia. I already shared my first few days on the island, I already showed you my top 7 favorite beaches. Now, it's time to dive deeper into the heart of Sardinia's treasures. One of the things my family and I absolutely had to do in Sardinia was take a day trip to the Maddalena Archipelago. We booked a semi-private sailing trip on the spot from the port of Palau and soon we were off, leaving the shore behind. Our first stop was the beautiful Spargy Island, where we were greeted by stunning crystal clear water and untouched nature. It was a perfect start to our sailing adventure. So we just got down to the first beach, also with the tender, it's easy. Cala Granada was extremely beautiful. Two small coves and the main beach connected by short trails. But we decided not to go down the main one when we saw a group of wild boars being fed food, attacking children and stealing purses from tourists. Locals had warranted us, but I wasn't expecting to see them in action. Oh my god, oh my Giulia non scendiamo. Not there feeding food! No, don't you feed this boars? No. Immediately no. No! You, you don't shame though. I'm not going down there. Are we fucking for real? I'm zooming in. No, Giulia, we go. We went back to one of the first coves for a last swim before going back on board, and I was pleasantly surprised to find out the beach was completely empty. We had it all to ourselves. The tour continued, revealing more hidden gems like Cala del Amore and countless tiny coves so remote they don't even appear on maps. We then made our way to the famous Budeli Island, where we stopped for an unforgettable swim in the pristine natural pools. The crystal clear turquoise water were incredible, as snorkeling there was a dream. We found ourselves surrounded by hundreds of vibrant fish, gracefully swimming around us and the boat, making it a truly magical experience in the heart of the Budelli Marine Park. Life, we can see that the, the shore is pink. I don't know if you can see it in the phone, but I can see it, especially when the water is 
you know, uh, wetting the sand. And there you can see a pink. I don't know if the phone is getting it. Budelis Pink Beach gets its color from tiny coral and shell fragments mixed into the sand. Over time, these elements create the pink effect, and the beach is now protected to preserve the natural beauty. We continued our island hopping adventure through the archipelago, with our next stop at Isola di Santa Maria. Here we spent nearly an hour relaxing on the pristine sands of Cala Santa Maria, soaking in the beauty of the surroundings. Everyone that was on a bigger boat left and went on their trip and left us with all this free fish for us and for the other people on the island and it's so beautiful. You can enjoy the beauty of the beach even with all those people but it's a lot nicer like that, isn't it? I, I really like this and I also think that we made the right choice taking this sailboat that's our sailboat and we'll be sh shortly going on it again. Here he comes. After this incredible sail through the Madalena archipelago, it's time to finally explore some of my favorite often underrated towns along the northeastern coast of Sardinia. These hidden gems offer a perfect mix of local charm, culture and natural beauty. First stop, Orosei, where I visited Chiesa di Sant'Antonio. This historic church stands out with simple yet striking architecture, and next to it you'll find a beautiful courtyard and the remains of ancient frescoes that give a glimpse into its past. I have to be honest, at first glance Orosei can seem a bit run down, 
Many houses are abandoned and not every street is well maintained. But despite that, I found so many beautiful spots that I fell in love with. Maybe it's the tourism student in me, but I see real potential here for attracting more visitors and revitalizing the town in the future. Also, if you're in the area and want to refresh in a bit, I recommend this beach, which is really near the town. Next up is the charming town of Posada, perched on a hill with its medieval roots still visible. The hidden gem offers stunning views, rich history, and a sense of timelessness that sets it apart from the more touristy spots in this area. While walking through Posada, I came across the town's charming church. The completely white outside and the overall look of it really reminded me of those beautiful churches I saw in Greece during my travels there. The village itself had a peaceful vibe, with its narrow streets and historic feel, making it a really lovely place to explore. I'm now stepping inside because I'm not dressed properly for a sacred place, but I am showing you just from the entrance door. I began my climb up to the hill to reach Posada's medieval tower. Talked about the town, these ancient structures offer incredible views once you reach the top. I love the fact that this is written also in Sardinian dialect, as you can see. It's not... it's similar to Italian, but definitely another language, you can see. It. Just also by looking at it. I really like this. We're not even at the top, just at the entrance, and it's already looking good. And then at the end you have this stair to get to the top, to the very top. This is where you went down also. But this is the view. It's worth it for me.
I continued exploring the area beneath the tower's archaeological site, passing by traditional homes and enjoying the beautiful views. It's a quiet area and, in my opinion, it really shows off the character of the village. This part of the village really reminds me of Anafiotica or Anafiotica, I don't know how to spell the name, but that's the really ancient part of the of Athens and it's looking similar. You know the vibes with all the rocks. I really I'm really enjoying this place. Now, I want to highlight two towns I used to visit in the evening after dinner, Santudoro and Budoni. Each offers its own vibe and character, and they really come to life after dark. They both have big artisanal markets every night, and I love strolling around. Personally, I found Santudoro to be more lively and charming, with its cute streets and vibrant atmosphere. The town has a great mix of restaurants, bars, and boutiques, and at night it's filled with both locals and tourists. There's always something happening there, making it the perfect spot for an evening stroll. Not the people staring, like, <laughs> have you never seen someone vlogging? I mean... It's so sad how the frescoes on this house are slowly, slowly, slowly going away. Because this is real nice. I can see the boat, the sun. That's nice. Okay, so now I get why they're fading because they were made in 1975 long ago. The other town I was staying really close to was Budoni. You may recall this name if you saw my first vlog of the series in Sardinia, in which I brought you to that really beautiful and windy beach. During the night here, I used to stroll through the vibrant evening market filled with local artisans displaying their handmade crafts. One night, I even had dinner at a cozy restaurant in town. The energy in Budoni after dark is laid back, with locals and tourists mingling in the warm evening. It's a great place to take in the relaxed coastal vibe while discovering unique pieces from the artisans. One night we even bumped into a crazy 90s revival music festival. I enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you. 
I also wanted to add a few spots I didn't cover in the previous videos that could interest you if you'll ever find yourself in the area. And just like that, our journey through Sardinia comes to an end. As we head home, taking the ferry at sunrise, I can't help but reflect on all the amazing places we explored. From hidden beaches to charming towns like Posada, Santo Doro and Budoni. Each stop left its mark, and this trip has been unforgettable. If you followed along in my previous vlogs, you've seen the beauty, the culture, the adventure this island offers. Now, as the sun rises over the sea, it's time to say goodbye to Sardinia for now. But stay tuned, I have more content coming.